Okay, thank you for coming, everyone. Uh, I'm uh, responsible for the financial services industry um, at uh, MarkLogic, and I will be talking about um, using liquidity risk management within liquidity management and more general framework as a case study of how semantics and ontology can actually enhance that process um, rather than dealing with very specific um, aspects of the FIBO and ontology, semantics technology. I'll be speaking more about what liquidity risk management is and where um, some of its problems can be addressed um, with the technology we're all talking about today. So um, we're dealing with um, a new way, at least I'm proposing, a new way to look at how liquidity management and liquidity risk management can be reframed and re rebuilt. Um, and the primary difficulty we have right now is the pressure on financial institutions, especially the mega institutions that have uh, come into being um, in terms of both using liquidity management as a competitive edge vis-a-vis -vis one another uh, globally. Uh, they all have global reach. And also in response to the regulations. Almost every regulation that takes up the headlines today has a particular requirement about risk management, specifically about credit risk and specifically about liquid risk, uh, liquidity risk and the um, accounting for the internal funding requirements of the uh, institutions. And it's becoming a little tedious because um, the... Um, okay, this is... Right, I'll, go, I'll go on. This is the original deck, but... Um, but I'll continue uh, with this. The operational management is, has three legs, basically. The funding management, the internal funding requirements, identifying funding gaps, and then responding to it. Uh, manage the cash flow and collateral operations, cash flow management, collateral operations management, so you get the data into the decisions about funding, and then the risk, and that risk is twofold. One is operational, that uh, get the funding where it needs to go within the company, uh, plus its implications on the balance sheet through asset liability management process. And there are three components. Um, the yellow ones are the application stack, which may be homegrown or commercially available. And the bottom one is the process that uh, harvests data from many databases. The databases underneath are legacy transactional infrastructure. Um, and there are many. Part of the reason is the mergers and acquisitions that we've seen over the past 10 years. Everybody accumulated uh, smaller companies with their own technology infrastructure and sometimes incompatible technology. The funding part as a business process draws on the results, the collateral manager application and the cash flow manager generates, and the liquidity risk um, applications or module. So we've got data silos everywhere, but everybody wants a 360 view of where the funds originate and how they travel to their target budgets. And as they do so, they need to generate reports about cost of capital, usage, uh, the trail, the audit trail, and so forth. So liquidity risk management function is this diagram explains it as, as a continuous process um, and the boxes at the bottom uh, are indicate what it is that we're missing and what we would like to have built into these boxes. The first one is essentially collecting the data that explains us the behavior of the, the transactional systems and the data they generate and understanding where the risk exposure originates from in terms of risk groups. And then the first one, and the second one is the calculations, where we do the simulations and come up with uh, the results. And the third box is the reporting. And it's entirely sequential, and it is overlaid on a transaction infrastructure where you dip in and extract some of the transaction flow data, 
use it, and then pass it along to the next stage. The other thing that is generally not captured in that diagram and in the legacy systems is the event signal data. That's generally outside the transactional systems, but events occur through news, market activity, volatility data during the course of trading, and um, the things you may harvest from social media, and the payments, and the irregularities in payments, and the payments supervision that comes through the fraud surveillance systems. And all of that is generally has been outside the transactional streams that feed existing liquidity, liquidity management applications. Event stream management today, when we look at it as a technology stack, we're using complex event processing technology, messaging technology, transaction flow, XML and their derivative instruments traveling as uh, documents, but all of them are independent of one another and they do have exist in their own time dimension, but temporally it, it's very difficult to relate them until they get accumulated in a data warehouse somewhere. And uh, we don't establish the causal relationships in time, in point in time when they occur. We're waiting too long to start making sense of them in unison. And what we miss, the opportunity we miss, and the information that we miss in this case, is those independent streams that may be client transactions, economic indicators data that is published regularly, uh, market data, uh, market activity information, and the trading data, news, all of those have causal and temporal relationships. And we can capture them in point in time when they occur and make them travel together and make them get to a destination into an analytical box as if they were one unit of work, one unit of information and exploit it very early rather than uh, going through this sequential process of moving data, accumulating it, and then attempting for discovery. So when we look at event streams, we have to realize it's much more than data. That is the contextual operational significant information that uh, affect one another. We just don't know how to quantify those effects as they happen, but we should be doing that. And we should be doing that in the context of both regulatory uh, supervision, uh, institutional governance, and in terms of um, uh, paying attention to uh, the PNL aggregation across lines of business. So the proposition we would have is to look at events and capture them as RDFs. And, and I'll describe what the repercussions of that would be if we were thinking of a liquidity management uh, infrastructure and a liquidity risk management infrastructure in that context. So we would treat cash flows right from the source origin um, is events that we could transpose into RDFs and manage through the flow as RDFs. Same thing with collateral updates, updates to collateral valuations and do the same thing. And then we would actually establish the relationship between those using ontologies and semantics as they travel. So my examples are very simple. They're meant to be illustrative. So all of this will be familiar to you, but I want to get to a point where I can relate um, what happens in the course of the time dimension uh, and uh, the, the kind of analyses we need to be making um, points in time. So if First Bank is in London and London is in England, and I do I capture these in um, RDFs, and we will find that banks that are interested in collateral lending business that are in England, we will come to the, infer we will infer from that that, um, sorry, First Bank actually is in England um, because it's owned by a company in London, therefore it's subject to regulations in the UK. And I would actually treat all collateral lending um, operations of this first bank as if they were subject to um, UK reporting um, 
regulations. The, the workflows that define the ontology um, is um, going to be based on relating the processes and the, um, the reporting requirements. The green ones are either internal reports or regulatory reports. The blue ones are the processes that I'm describing that will actually use our DFs. And we will actually um, the, the, the correlate the calculated results that go into reports by um, the semantic relationships we establish as the RDFs you know, flow. Um, this is my view of how we would actually establish a FIBO framework specifically for liquidity risk management. If you go clockwise, uh, starting with the boxes, uh, we would be determining the relationship of a cash flow that is related to collateral. Um, in practice, in liquidity management, we establish risk groups. A particular cash flow is part of a risk group that is defined by sensitivity to, say, interest rates or income, household income, or variations in other economic indicators. A collateral valuation is part of a risk group that is exposed to, say, the real estate market in Southern California or the currency fluctuations in Europe. And uh, we would actually establish those and then, and, and then travel around into uh, the, um, the delta calculations we would make when we do have changes in the underlying parameters or underlying data. And that would invoke the calculation engines that I talked to about earlier. Uh, that would not only uh, do the simulations incrementally as data changes, but update the, um, the risk profile as it goes along. What I would do is in the um, detail out the uh, cash flow management and collateral processes, um, is actually insert the ontology into the cash flow manager where predictive forecasting capability lies and that cash flow manager is enriched with the, um, the ontology and um, uh, mapped to a reporting hierarchy. Each reporting hierarchy is, based, is mapped to, in practice, a risk group but we do a lot of data transformation and data movement to make that happen. What we should be doing is that the risk group has a reporting path all the way to the management level on its own, and we would actually invoke uh, that reporting path with the cash flow manager when the uh, semantic relationship indicates a change in the underlying uh, relationship. Same thing with collateral manager, it is the host for the ontology definitions related to collateral valuations and the risk groups that, uh, that different collateral assets fall into. So instead of that middle that had a lot of ETL movement and relied on transactional systems for movement of data, we would actually insert the facility that would build the RDFs and um, the capture the data as RTFs and build the ontology and then move forward into the, into the cash flow manager, collateral manager that would activate the specific calculations we would do. This would not be sequential. This would be concurrent processes depending on what the signal data is telling us. And that's uh, the short version of the presentation. So I'll stop for QA. That leaves us a lot of time for QA. There was one, a couple of slides there that um, went into detail about uh, how to construct risk groups and relate them to specific calculations in liquidity risk management. Uh, but I can. Uh, Go into detail about those if that's of particular interest to anyone. So any questions? Yeah. Dean. In terms of this particular use cases that you showed today, um, what... Um, right. Uh, that was one example. The, the, um, the bitemporality and the significance of bitemporal capability in, uh, the, uh, in, in the context of liquidity risk management and just uh, an example of uh, what... Uh, would help. Um, if I have a cash flow one um, from a source one 
and it belongs to risk group three. And then it, that cash flow is related to a collateral asset two, which is part of a risk group three. And the cash flows are essentially payments uh, for, well, for mortgages. And at some point I get the news that in that, from a debtor in, in, in County D, and then I get a news report that says, for the past three quarters in a row, household income at Camp to D declined by 3%. <laughs> so what I, at that point, I know something. There's regular time dimension, and then there's another time dimension that is after the fact that I know there is household income decline in that county. Should I move my cash flow from one risk group to another risk group? Should I go and move my collateral from one risk group to another? And suppose I know that the payments are essentially payments into a mortgage-backed portfolio that is coming from a tranche that is interest rates payments only versus payments against the principal. And therein lies, I need to keep whatever I do in two different times one is after I know the household income has declined, now that I have to look at my risk grouping differently versus what I would continue, uh, hoping that nothing has changed and the payments are coming. There's nothing, no irregularity in the cash flows, but except that there's this news that changes my parameters of the way I look at risk grouping. That's where my temporality would help. When did I know what changed and what did I do after I know what has changed? Yes, uh, the, we have customers who use that function for very similar um, you know, portfolio optimization type applications. Uh, there is a reporting application for um, internal surveillance at trade desks that also applies, which is very significant, not as uh, quantitative, but it, it, yes. Well, you can use Sparkle or all. Um, if we're capturing these as RDFs, what are we using to leverage RDF uh, information? Uh, the, well, it, it will depend on both the ontology, but first of all, it's either Sparkle or all. You can use them. Uh, a lot of the customers have very specific requirements of what they're watching for. The change in the event or the exception event that they capture is going to trigger a, an application that looks the entire RDFs, entire history, because history is also uh, stored, um, and do some, some analysis based on that exception. Exceptions are the type of exceptions I was describing uh, that change the parameters that are part of that ontological relationship we establish, like a cash flow is actually in this risk group, did something related to that cash flow change it so that we have to disqualify it out of that risk group and put it somewhere else? Um, and, and that's the logic. That's the logic depending on what it is you're doing, uh, derivatives trading or mortgage-backed assets or, you know. Yes, you can use Sparkle. You can use, um, but you know, that's the interface to the data. But it goes, yeah. Yeah, I mean, XQuery is very particular to MarkLogic, but um, that's how you interface with the data. The application itself that leverages that data is, you know, varies depending on the line of business, but that's essentially most of the time, maybe 80% of the time, proprietary logic that the customers have. Mike Bennett. Right. 
Right, so um, we, we are building ontologies. The, the next... So what, what Mike's asking, is there an event ontology? There's an event ontology that we're building for different lines of business with customers. Uh, the, the talk that's followed me is from SmartLogic, the partner that we work very uh, closely with. And um, we have a number of projects that went into production already. Uh, but it is not a global event ontology at this point, but it is very specific to the things we do, like you know, credit derivatives trading or fund portfolio optimization or you know, econometric forecasting, things like that. Okay. Anything else? Anything else? Okay, let's. Thank okay, you. thank you. Um.